Hi, I'm Chris from Simmel and today I'm going to cover something that I've seen be asked a few times on our social medias and in our Slack channel, which is setting up screen effects when traveling through clouds. And I'm going to be doing this via blueprints, so we'll be in Unreal Engine 4. I'm going to be using 4.25 with the latest binary version, the 4.2a plugin. I'm going to be running through how to use TrueSky to give you the data needed in order to see this functionality and it can be quite simple. There'll obviously be a few variations and alternate methods but this is the one that I set up fairly quickly and easily and so something that you can jump off and build upon in your systems. But firstly I'm going to be attaching the section of blueprint that I'm going to need into my player actor which in this case is a plane that I've created. I am using the basic flying blueprint that comes with Unreal Engine. All that I really edited is I've changed the mesh to a fighter plane, which I created. And I have also altered some of the speeds in it so that the plane just goes a little bit quicker so we're not taking years to get to the actual clouds. And so if I open up the blueprint here, as you can see, very standard, exactly what you get normally. The blueprints that are going to be added can actually be thrown in anywhere. Uh, it could be within the level blueprint or created in its own small blueprint actor that can be attached to an object. All that you need to ensure is that the get actor location, which I'll show you when we wire it up, uh, is targeting the object that will be traveling through the clouds and that you want the screen effect to be affecting. Uh, I've opted to do this with the flying blueprint just so that I could leave the get actor location set to self and not have to worry about assigning the mesh. So the nodes that we're going to need, I'm going to be taking from the event tick line. And we're going to be looking for cloud point test. And then in the position, we're going to get actual location. And as you see, leave that set to target self. And that's pretty much it for if you want to check if you are within a cloud. So I'm going to create a print string just to show the functionality of this. And then compile it and hit play. And as you can see, currently the string is printing zero as we are not intersecting with any clouds. But as soon as we start getting near clouds and intersecting with them, it will produce a value between zero and one. So now that we've figured out if we are intersecting with a cloud, what can we do with this? Well, as you can imagine, there's a lot of options and possibilities of how you can work with this number that is being output. For example, you could do some function with blueprints, such as branches to set or limit or detriment your steering when you're within clouds, or you can have raindrops peering upon your camera lens and such. Uh, you could do that via post-process materials. But I'm going to do a quick example for a extremely basic lens effect for ice buildup. Uh, I'm going to be using this same level with my uh, flying pawn, the plane. So as you can see here, I have the blueprint already set up. As well as I also created a small material and we'll also need a material parameter collection, but I'll get to that when we need it. And so the first thing that I did was that I went to our actual setup, which obviously has the plane and the camera, and I put a flat plane, as in a single-sided poly, essentially, in front of the camera. And this is where I'm going to put the lens effect on. I'm aware this isn't the most efficient way to do it. However, this is just the most basic way that I could think of doing for a simple setup. And so this is where we're going to be placing the material that we're going to have the effect occur on. So I will talk us through the effect initially. Uh, it's mainly powered through a radial gradient, which you can get by just typing in radial, and then you'll get radial gradient exponential. And uh, to set it up, I initially previewed the node on a flat plane, as that's what I will be projecting onto. I then started by inputting numbers here to find a good balance for the actual gradient itself and I used a 1 minus node to invert it as I knew that I wanted it to be see-through to begin with uh, and then 
for the effect to come in from the sides of the plane to cover the edges of the camera and so I as I said started putting in numbers and I found that inputting 2 into the radius caused most of this to become black and so I used that as a baseline and then added it into a subtract node in which I put in the value that I got from my material parameter collection now I've not told you where this material parameter collection is coming from so it is literally just one value that we're getting which is a scalar parameter which I have named cloudiness at point and as you can imagine within the blueprint that I've created I get the cloud point test from my actor location the same as before and once I've done all my maths to the value which I'll go through shortly uh, I output it to a set scalar parameter value cloudiness at point which then feeds through into the material parameter which then works through the material and I'm currently getting it so that since 2 is a full black plane and then I tweaked with the values and found that 0 0.5 was most of the plane appearing white with just the center being black which will mean that the center is see-through but the edges of it will be solid so I've clamped the value to be subtracted to 1.5 as this value will be 2 and so the maximum that it can be reduced down to will be 0 0.5 and then you're probably wondering why I've got a multiply by 0 0.1, but I will explain that in a few moments. So the maths that we did to our cloud point test is fairly simple. We're gonna we run it through a branch. And I just did this so that the edge of clouds, where it's very, very thin, or just thin layers of clouds will mean that I'm not going to get the icy effect as if you're flying through a very small amount of clouds I don't want it to be building up and so I set it to 0 0.3 and if it's above that it will then become true in which case we will then take a float variable which I've just named ice build up and we will add the cloud point test which is multiplied by the delta time just to make it a bit more stable and we will just add that and then we'll have a set we will have set it to a clamp of 20 and this 20 clamp makes sense because if we are just outputting this value into the material itself the 20 will get divided by 10 which means that its max is 2 and with the clamp here that will mean that there is a slight buffer zone of 0.5 so that if we exit the cloud there will be a delay before the iciness starts reducing and then I'm doing pretty much the inverse here or if we do not have um, a cloudiness of above 0 0.3 and this just means that when we are not within a cloud we are not building up the value and so the value starts to go down and the icy effect reduces I want to compile and just place so that you can all see this in effect I've also hooked up a print string the same as before just so that we can see it set to zero and then it build up I said this one's going to be printing out the variable so as you see it'll go above one as it is just adding each tick and so I've currently got mine set up so that it takes a little bit of time while being within a cloud for the IC value to increase to a point where you can see it but as you can see the edge of my screen starts getting icy and it builds all the way up but then once I leave the clouds if I can find the edge of the cloud there we are the ice oh, I went into the water the ice eventually fades out from the edge of my screen So I'll just do a slow pan through all of the nodes. This here again is the delta time and this is running off the event tick. It's just that there are other blueprints to the left. And then get to location, point test, branching, adding values and minusing. 
eventually going out with a set scalar parameter value and then the material is taking the parameter value multiplying it by 0 0.1 clamping it adding it to the radial gradient inverting it and then using it as a lerp to well as an alpha mask on a lerp for the texture which i literally just have a icy effect and then a black just so that it we can use it as a opacity mask on the flat plane Uh, I hope that this tutorial has at least helped some people uh, and has at least given some people some ideas of how to integrate this in a more practical scenario. Uh, as always, I'm excited to see what people come up with. Feel free to post on our social medias using the hashtag DrewSky, as well as heading over to our Q&A channel on our website if you have any questions or issues and for general discussion about DrewSky. And feel free to drop a comment if you have any ideas for video tutorials that you would like to see and I'll see if I can get around to making them. Thanks.